All right, what's up, fiends? Adam Card here. I am joined by T Betty. How's it going? Hello, everybody. All right, T Betty is my aunt. She's also a big Polonia fan, and this, of course, is Polonia Week, uh, brought to you by House of Horrors Podcast and the Midnight Society. So today we are going to talk about Channel Thirteen. <laughs> All right, so Channel 13 was released, was physically released in 2015. However, it was filmed, I believe, around 1987-ish, something like that, Uh, when they, when the Polonia brothers were in their, uh, uh, I believe, their early 20s or something. Yeah, and uh, of course, this is the DVD from SRS Cinema. Uh, This was gifted to me by (laughs) T-Betty. So thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, really interesting little movie here. Um, so it's it's an anthology movie. Um, it has three parts. Uh, of course, it's directed by Mark, Mark and John Polonia. Um, let's see. It was written by John. It was, and also the special effects were also done by John Polonia. Um, it was edited by Mark and the new animation effects that they kind of added were done by Mark and Mark's son, Anthony. It stars John Polonia, Mark Satterley, Mark Polonia, Chris Beacom, and Dave Fife as the video game guy. So this movie starts out um, at at an arcade called the Screenplay Arcade. I thought that was kind of cute. And there's there's a video gamer guy and he comes home, and he turns on the television to relax, and he starts flipping through some channels, but there's only one channel that he can get. Now, remember, this is 1987, so this is, this is you know, this is uh, antennas and whatnot, so this is not like, like it is today. Um, and, of course, what channel? 13. Channel 13. That's the only thing he can get. Oh, it won't change channels. It won't change. He keeps changing, and it just it will not change. So at first we get like glimpses of, of, of a few different things. It has nothing to do with the rest of the story. Like we get glimpses of a zombie, uh, some guy dying by the knife, and some guy with a machete. Like, like they're all just kind of flash across the screen for like five seconds each. And, uh, and then we all of a sudden we get the host of Channel 13, who is, uh, according to the the back of, of of the DVD uh, is a demon monk. I was like, okay, his face is all jarbled up and it's kind of gross looking. Yeah, it was pretty gross. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so yeah, kudos kudos to the mask on that one because yeah, it, that that one was pretty that gross. Was good. <laughs> yeah. So of course he he, he you know he, uh, the gamer guy still trying to change the channel. There's no no going. So uh, the monk then starts introducing the stories. And then we get to story number one, which is called All Hallows Eve. And this one kind of takes the place of the majority of the movie. It's, it's definitely the longest one. Um, and it stars the Polonia brothers in this one. And uh, so we start out with a guy named Harold. And he starts carving a pumpkin. And uh, the cool thing I liked about this scene is that the pumpkin looked like it looked like it was bleeding. Yeah, it was weird. And it was it was really cool looking. Like I, yeah, I'm not really was, sure how they did it, but like it was really like it. Yeah, that was that was neat. Yeah, it literally looked like this thing was bleeding. It was it was it was a pretty cool little effect. And like I said, these guys had no money to do this, so you know. It's pretty amazing the stuff they did in this movie for like very little money. Um, so yeah, so so he carves the, the bloody pumpkin, uh, and then when he finishes it, he puts his hand like into the mouth, and then the mouth you don't see the mouth, but you know the the he basically bites the hand, and then of course he wakes up. It's the whole thing's a dream. <laughs> So I, I don't know. I, I, I thought that was kind of neat. 
the way they did that because it was a little extra, you know, kind of a little extra piece. Um, now, in the beginning uh, of the movie, you do have modern day uh, Mark Poloni come on and kind of kind of introduce the whole thing. And he said this story uh, inspired his future movie called Halloween Night, which I, which I have yet to see. But if it's anything like this, I am totally down. Um, so Harold wakes up. His brother comes home. And they kind of have an argument. The brother's like, oh, you, you've never grown up, blah, 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 you know, all, all this jazz. And then he, the brother actually punches, punches him, and he falls back, you know, like a, like a, like, like a crazy person. It's, and apparently the brother's going to be throwing some sort of Halloween party later that night. So apparently th- th- it, it's Halloween. And he's like, don't ruin this party. He's like, all right. So then Harold walks over to they they have a they have a scarecrow in the, in their backyard, and he he walks over to the to the scarecrow and he kind of starts talking to him, and then Harold says he's uh, he's going to cause destruction tonight. So I was like, okay, interesting. So then Harold goes to the grocery store, and this this is like this is a really weird part. I thought. Oh, that was weird. He. Yeah, he, he walks in and he, he he steals one of these like real sharp knives that's just out and about. <laughs> you can just grab it and take it out of the sheet, the whole thing. <laughs> and then he, he like stalks this clerk that works at the grocery store. And and he, he he ends up killing him like in the middle of the aisle with this giant knife. And like it's just I don't know, it's just it's real bizarre and real It is, you know that scene according to what he said in the in the um the beginning. That that was actually filmed when that grocery store was open and people were actually shopping. And he was wondering at the time what they thought those people thought about that. That was hilarious. <laughs> I, I would like to have seen behind the scenes of that. that Wouldn't would, you? <laughs> that would have been something right there. So now we cut to the Halloween party. And we see that the scarecrow is off of his, his uh, pole. The scarecrow actually meets up with Harold. Like they kind of sit down and kind of have like a like a conversation type of thing. Yeah, he tells him you're my best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you're my best friend. Blah blah blah. And he, he's tired of you know, Harold's tired of being picked on, you know, all kind of stuff. So then the scarecrows, <laughs> and this is this is this was great. The scarecrows like, let's go kick some ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was and, and like it's a, it's a dude like he has the full. Like a uh, head thing on the whole thing is like the, the there's like little pieces sticking out like for like eyeballs looking type of thing and it's yeah it, it's actually pretty neat looking. yeah a little straw here and there sticking out of- <laughs> yeah sticking out and it's like like it, the costume was pretty decent actually it was so now we cut to another guy I, I presume it's one of the Polonia brothers but because because you don't see him because he's he's wearing a Michael Myers outfit. Mask the out, they you know the the jumper suit, the whole thing, and he, this Michael Myers guy walks down to the basement. He's he, he's all drunk, right? He's drinking, and then there's a there's a weight bench there. Oh, I so, love that scene. So he goes to the weight to the weight bench, and he's you know he's lifting this like, like little bitty barbell. He's trying to lift it. He's so drunk. He can't. He's so drunk he can't even lift it. And reaching those weights with the legs, and his legs couldn't reach. Yeah, yeah the legs it was hilarious. It was That's my really favorite scene in that one. <laughs> so the, of course, the the scarecrow comes. The so the scarecrow basically just just t- makes a fist and just punches directly through Michael Myers' face, like from the back, <laughs> and it just goes. And again, uh, really good effect for no money. Like, it was. I mean, it, it was really, uh, I was really surprised at, at how good the stuff looked in this one. Because this, I, I find sometimes uh, the Polonia stuff looks like really fake and really cheap. But but these looked really good. Like like way like above what they normally do. Especially back then in the, in the 80s. Because that was when they're, that was like their, you know, their first heyday, I guess you could say. Then the Scarecrow goes after the crazy brother. Harold's brother, and uh, he he ends up getting an axe to the head, you know, kind of like Jason, you know, type of deal. Um, and this, okay, so this is where I think it should have ended. 
but it keeps going. There's a, there's actually a little more to it. Um, and I think I'm I'm gonna end this story there because I'm not gonna tell you the ending of this story. Um, I mean, there are a couple more uh, pretty gruesome kills and stuff to this story. Like I thought the kills were pretty good. Like, it goes on for like another ten minutes. Like <laughs> you you think it would end with the the death of the crazy brother, but it but it doesn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, overall, I actually really did like this story. I thought I thought the acting was pretty decent. Um, the effects I thought were were pretty great for no budget. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a good time. Like I said, if if Halloween night is anything like this at all, I'm totally down. I definitely, I, I, oh, I, me I, too. I yeah, I definitely want to seek it out. It's on my list, and I, I'll I'll get it eventually. So now now we cut back to the gamer guy. He's he's still trying to change the channel. No going. So the demon monk is back, and he introduces the second story called Claws of Terror. Now, now this is the one I think I think you 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 liked, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this one is about a man walking in the in the snow, and he has a bag with him, and he encounters this like large skeletal monster bird thing. Oh my I'm, god, that thing! I tell you, <laughs> I was kid kidding with you, toy. I was scared. I was gonna run. <laughs> that screech that came out of the thing before you see it. Oh, my goodness, that screech would have scared me. <laughs> right, I know. I'd have uh, hightailed it out of there. <laughs> but the the um, the effect that they use, I don't know if it was stop motion or or, or or what. I'm not sure what it was, but it was um, it it looks like it was superimposed over the other stuff, and it was. <laughs> Like it's definitely this is easily the fakest looking thing in the entire movie. Oh, but I loved it though. <laughs> um, however, it was pretty funny, and uh, it was, and uh, yeah, it, it was kind of like mangled and kind of crazy looking. So I mean, yeah, it, you know, in that way, it, it 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 really worked. But like I said, the I, I mean, for being you know like really not the greatest monster thing or whatever you want, bird or whatever you want to call that was hilarious. I tell you, I got the biggest kick out of that. I couldn't it, stop laughing at that. Thing. It is definitely the funniest part in this movie. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's, it definitely is. And he, he's like, he's trying to peck at him and stuff. <laughs> um, but it, but in the bag, is it is it like bird seed or something? Yeah, it's sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. Okay. So like he uses that to like distract the bird, right? <laughs> and the one thing I thought was interesting though, there's only one line in this entire short. And it's like "f you bird" or something. It was like, like that's, that's it. That's the only line because the guy's mute. He doesn't say anything except for that one line as he's walking away. Um. So yeah, and of, of course he he walks away, but the bird attacks him anyway. <laughs> and that and, and that's pretty much the whole short. That's pretty much the whole thing. Yeah, it was short and sweet. I want to say it was even maybe ten minutes, maybe I don't know. It, like this one was real real short. So then we cut back to the video game guy, and uh, again he's just trying to change the channel, trying to find something else. <laughs> and so now we're introduced to the last story called Slaughterhouse. And now this one was was interesting because this one is very um, uh, Motel Hell ish, but but done, uh, you know, for no money. <laughs> so. Uh, basically, this one's about a guy named Hank, played by one of the Polonia brothers. Uh, back, I, I definitely couldn't tell who was who back then, so I can't. Tell no, you. I couldn't either. <laughs> uh, uh, Hank, he he he's a uh, a cannibal spaghetti farmer. Is basically what 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 he ends up being, um, and he actually has a guy dressed in like the Jason sack. <laughs> Uh, like killing people to 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 mush them up into food, kind of thing. Um, it 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 was a pretty interesting little short. Um, um, I think if it was fleshed out a little more, I think it could have been it could have been something. I thought uh, this one I thought was it was probably the weakest of the three, um, just because there wasn't there wasn't a lot going on, but you know everything was kind of implied. And it wasn't it wasn't over the top or anything, you know what I mean? It was very definitely more subtle than the other ones, for sure. We cut to the last scene of the video game guy, and 
all of a sudden the the demon monk guy shows up and like makes and like shoots this thing at him at the <laughs> guy and like makes him disappear and then that's the, that's how the movie ends uh yeah so um so overall though i i was thoroughly entertained by this one um, i was too especially since um i'm not i wasn't the biggest fan of like the old polonia stuff like the early stuff um i have seen a few uh like hellspawn and stuff like and, um yeah I actually need to rewatch House Long because when I watched it, I wasn't, I don't think I was in the right mindset. But um, now that I understand the, the, the Polonia folks better now, uh, I, I, think I, I think I'd have a new appreciation for it. I do remember it being pretty bad, though. <laughs> so I don't remember. Uh, but I am going to do a, a rewatch on that soon. Yeah, uh, and let me say this too. If you, do, if you do watch this movie, make sure you listen to the commentary because he tells you a lot of things that went on, like, they had camera problems, and they shot some in uh, in video, some in with the camera, some with the VHS. They they had to have send a camera to get a part put on it, and mm -hmm. uh, also that he explains that they found he found him in a draw, but he couldn't find the script, so he had to do some wraparound in in, uh. in the film. And uh, but I tell you what, if you want to have a good laugh, I mean, because see, I like the silliness, I like the um, basicness of some of them, the early ones, but I can see they are gradually. Everything's imp improving, but that bird—I yeah. will never get over that bird. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fun, fun movie. So, yeah, um, if you want to laugh and have a good time, I really highly recommend this one. Yeah, same. Um, I, I, I really like this one, especially the first story. I thought was really good. That was good. Uh, just, just know going in that it, it is super low budget. It's like almost no budget. Right. And um, so that's that's the level you, of stuff you're going to get here. This, this was made, um, I think, right before they did um, uh, Splatter Farm. So I just watched that, by the way. <laughs> if anybody, yeah, if any, anybody knows Splatter, I know Splatter Farm is one of their big ones. So that's uh, that's around the. T this was made right before that, and they found they they didn't even know that they had uh, they had this because th didn't he find it in like a drawer? In a drawer, he was cleaning out of the drawers and yeah, the file cabinets. Came yeah. across, but he said he couldn't find his script because. Somehow he said they don't, he didn't remember what their mindset was, what they were thinking at the time to mm -hmm. film this. But uh, you really get the commentary is really good to watch in the beginning because it'll give you a better uh, understanding of what was going on at the time. You know, like with the camera problems and they filmed the thing in an actually live grocery store without permission. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And so that, that's a good because I don't usually watch commentaries. And this happened to start. I think it started before the film, if I remember right. And I was like, oh, I got to start watching these things. Because it really explained a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So the commentary is available on the SRS uh, DVD. Um, the movie itself, without the commentary, is also available on Tubi right now, if you do want to watch it. Um, like I said, I do recommend it. It's only an hour and 13 minutes altogether. So it's it, it's, it's it's not a big uh, commitment. You know what I mean? Uh, and that, that's actually one of the things I like about the Polonia movies too. They're, they're not a big commitment. They, cause they're only, they're usually only just a little bit over an hour. Uh, it's like, boom, boom, you're in out and you know, party time, you know? <laughs> so and yeah. most of that was filmed at the house and in their garage. Right. Yeah. I, I, I assume that that was their basement and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well very cool. Um, I'm going to give this movie, uh, I'm going to give it three and a half bats out of five. I agree. There you go. So yeah, uh, definitely check it out. It's definitely a good time, um, and definitely, I think one of the better Polonia Brothers movies that I've seen. Actually, it um, was good. He like said I was highly entertained. Uh, I was, I was, I was pretty impressed with it. So yeah. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? No, just like I said, you know, keep in mind it's funny. Uh, you know, it's one of the earliest things, and you gotta be in the mindset you want to laugh at a horror film. <laughs> I you like the silliness. I really do. But uh, Polone Brothers, I really do like them. I'm, I'm slowly getting to see a little bit of everything that they're doing. Um, I've been watching the most one every night on the, um, on Tubi, and I'm hoping I get more. But like I said, definitely good time. Awesome. All right, on that note, we are going to say goodbye. So you have a happy Polonia week, and we'll see you guys next time. Remember, stay spooky. Bye-bye. Hey.